One of the last of a dime three. You know where hip hop live without your skinny jeans. That's why I walk with a different walk, fought with a different heart, talk with a different walk. Smith and Wesley, Smith and Wesley, Smith, 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 Smith and Wesley, Smith, Smith and Wesley, Smith and Wesley, every representing lovely. That's the, how they first album started off, my nigga. Yo, I am a huge Smith and Wesson fan, yo. I got Smith and Wesson channel in my Pandora rotation, you feel me? You know what I mean? Smith and Wesson first album is in my wall in my studio. That shit is under mad construction right now. You know what I mean? Like, yo, so my nigga, I didn't know what to expect though. I'ma keep it a stack. I have been privilege to some of Smith and Wesson's most recent music. You know, remember I interviewed Tech when I was in the radio show in Brooklyn. He had sent me a lot of music, you know, to prep for the interview. And, you know, I, I follow him. So I've been privileged to hear a little different songs that come out here and there. But I didn't know what to, to expect when they got a whole project coming out. Because I followed them. Even when they went to and changed their name to the Coco Brothers. I was with him. I bought the Coco Brothers album. You know what I mean? Only nigga I know. I don't know no other nigga in the world that bought the Coco Brothers album other than myself, yo. Not one. I think I had it. Damn. That makes me feel I good. You the it. first person in the world I know that said that. You know what I mean? But I was still riding with him then. You know, it was still it was still Smith and Wesson to me. Facts. That's how I felt. So you know what I mean? I ain't know what to expect. So, but what you got on him? I, I like this shit. Like you said, everything you said, a fan would have you known from day one. So I went into this. Number one, the education of Smith & West, the first track. You know, that, 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 it, 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 come, it come off tight. Not to mention that it's night one to produce them. And who else is? No, it's another producer on there. Soul Council. Soul Council, okay. That's who it is. Night one is the Soul Council. They did their thing on the tracks, on every track on this motherfucker. Yo! Their production was crazy. The production yeah. was... Yo. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm listening. The production was crazy, though. Hell yeah. So there was like uh, that track, the, the first track, the one that I felt next was Testify. When he said, you know, the part, the part that really got me, and which is like the thing with the older rappers. You told, you know, the rappers from back in our back in the deck. When the older rappers rap, you know, people would expect certain things from them and shit. You know, it, it was it was one it was one bar where he said, uh take them take he want you he wants you to take them back to the shining, but his shape of mind is you know is, is in a different perspective. You know, yo, so I was like, gonna bring that same bar up, yo. So it's like it's like, you know, yeah, yeah, I feel that because you know he really can't do the shining rap because now he's 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 evolved into a, a older man. You know what I'm saying? So his perspective is different. You know, I felt that part right there, and then it goes into uh, Dreamland with Raekwon. I, I like to hear. I wish I would have heard more Wu and Boo Camp back in the day. Imagine what that would have sounded like. You know. Yeah, I think they both were just going 100 miles an hour, you feel me? Right, right, right. But imagine if they would have did some shit back in the day with the, with the way they were spitting back then. Oh, my goodness. It would have been crazy. And then you got uh, Ocean Drive, Let It Go, and Let Me Tell You. What's that, Rick Ross? This nigga just named damn near every track on the album just for the record, yo. <laughs> <laughs> he the name damn near. Every no, no, I, I got more. I got more. I got, I got, I got the all and illusions. That's not every track on the album, but that is seven tracks. Well, what's that? They got twelve, I think. Yeah, it got twelve tracks. Yeah, it's damn near every track on there, rock. But the shit with Rick Ross, I'm, 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 I'm not. I can't say I'm surprised if Rick Ross was able to spit on the track on that on that level. Being, you know, who in the mainstream, who Rick Ross is, it just wouldn't have been compatible with with boot camp. That, that, that's like, yeah, I get what you're saying. Like, I get you know what I'm saying? saying. But there's still like, you know, in 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 the boot camp era, yeah, Biggie was the Rick Ross, yeah, right. And you know, they they, they had a little beef with that. I don't want to say that, but I'm with no, you. hold on, hold on, hold on, Biggie, 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 and and. 
in the equivalent of the era. Like smooth fat nigga, cause they both smooth no, fat. No, no, I'm not talking. I, no, I told, Biggie I told, was I told, Brooklyn. Biggie was Brooklyn. No. Biggie had the ten boots on. Listen yeah, what I'm saying. Nah, we ain't doing yeah. shit. Biggie was yeah, selling weed. Listen what I'm saying. Yeah, Biggie listen what I'm saying. Weed I'm saying. Spot. We ain't gonna do this, yo. Yo, I'm saying. I'm saying in the in the in the in the topic of uh, rap style. Just a smooth fat nigga. I get what you're saying. I'm fucking. I'm no, no, not 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 that, but just the the, the, the subject. What they talk. What he rapped about. You know, Biggie uh, was like, like on that. Biggie was like on that boss money making. You know, being a, a rich nigga kind of shit, street rich nigga shit. And Ross was on that too, right? Biggie was a. He was a much more of a storyteller though. You don't think Ross got stories? Not like Biggie. Biggie Biggie snuck stories in damn near every verse. Yeah, but Ross got some stories too. He got bought, you know, he do his thing. But we not, we not come down. Compare, we not comparing. Yo, we still in March. We not going to compare Ross to Biggie. We ain't doing that in March. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not compare. Yo, it's not it's not that kind of a comparison, yo. It's a good comparison. They it's both fat comparison. black niggas, yo. If you want to do that, yo, they both. I see they both got like the slow, smoother flow. If you want to say that, but we not gonna compare their rhyme styles. We not. We not gonna compare their content. We not. Why not? We yo, not. You go, yo, do you Ross yo. got me and my bitch? No, Ross don't got me and my bitch. Do he got kick in the door? No, he don't got no, kick in the he, door. Do no, he, he, got don't, he don't got that at all. No, he, he don't, don't got, got that at all. Do Ross got? I got story to tell. No, he don't. Do Ross got give me the loop? No, he don't. I mean, I, do we got? Do, is there more stories you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> Nigga got his feelings over Biggie, yo. <laughs> yo, I'm talking about yo. The 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 rap. I'm not talking about what they rap about or everything. I'm talking about like the visual. This you know, is Biggie about was, Smith and Wesson. Listen, but what I'm saying is. <laughs> but back in the day, remember, remember Smith and Wesson and them had a, had a song dissing Biggie and them because of the rap style. I don't remember that. Huh? I don't remember that. I don't. They both was from Brooklyn. I'm going to send you a video. I'm, I'm going to pull it up. <clears throat> and you, you, you a Biggie fan. You should know. Did you like just... uh? Suppress that thought, that 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 instant out of your head and shit. Do you know Tupac and Biggie had beef, or are you suppressing that too? <laughs> yo, we ain't pay attention to all the fuck shit, yo. Uh, it was yo rap beat rap battle beef back then was Dude, better than it. Ross killed that shit. Ross versus yeah. Fire. He took a shot at Kanye in there. Unfortunately, this verse is on the Smith and Wesson album, and a lot of people don't really know about and listen to Smith and Wesson these days. So I feel like Rick Ross verse is going to get uh, uh, mistakenly unheard by a lot of people that it should be. True. Yo, back to what you were saying. Yo, I feel like yo, this Smith and Wesson album. Yo, it showed growth. Yo, if they wasn't on the same shit, and it, the the Shining, their first album is a classic, and they could have, like you said, on the first one, Testify, when they said that they wasn't going back there. They could have tried to recreate that, and I think that would have been a mistake if they did that. And only thing they really did to me was on the end of We Good. That's my, we good, we straight, well, that's my shit. But anyway, that shit, at the end of that, they threw the little, end, they threw the little instrumental on at the end of that. That Remember, it was on at the, on the further remix of the little bit. So... Which I thought they was going to rap on that shit. I was like, oh, shit, they getting ready to finally kill this beat. Because I wanted them to kill it on the first album and shit. But, yo, I, I fuck with it, though. All the way through, uh, yo, Rhapsody, her verse on that fire. I thought yeah. she sound like uh, the brat on there. I thought it was the brat at first. But, yeah, I mean, but yeah. not, 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 not no shade. I'm just saying, like, the way her cadence was on there kind of reminded me of the brat. But, yeah, that shit, that shit was fire. Um, they got a song, they content. They got the song about their mother. You know, they got the song, nigga writing the letter, nigga talking to his son. 
Like, you know, I wish I was around more. All that kind of shit, yo. They wasn't, it wasn't one of them bar heavy punchline. They wasn't ever no bar heavy punchline rappers, though. You know what I mean? Even on Let It Go, they going back and forth, you know, bar for bar, line for line. That kind of shit, yo, I was entertained by, yo. You know what I mean? And now, you know what? Maybe start thinking with this shit, right? You know, the, uh, we, we, we see, we see the growth. And from when when it came out Smith and Wesson back in the day to Smith and Wesson present day. And the bars, you can hear the growth and everything like that. And you know where they came from. Do you think there's... So how, how many years ago was that? How many years ago was the shine? The first one? It's like 96, maybe? So, okay. What rapper nowadays, other than Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, you think... In that that that, that um, what's that? that that time span could come out and release something and it actually has some substance. What? Mainstream rappers. Yeah. Nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say uh You talking about that could that could come out twenty five years later and still do it? Right. Right. I mean I, I would say a lot of them because they sound good to us because we appreciate their content. No, but I'm saying like like let's let's, let's say for instance, I would, I would take somebody like Takashi Six Nine. His his his. Let's 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 listen to me. Hear me out. The rappers that spit that bullshit. Let's say Lil Yachty and shit like that. You know the rappers is popping right now. They spit that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Who you think would have something to say? In their in their older age. I don't know you. I, I think Twenty One Savage had something to say. Twenty yeah, I think Twenty One Savage would. I think Meek Mill had something to say. Definitely, well, definitely, Meek, Meek Mill. You can't put him in there because he definitely would have something to say. But you, I'm talking about like Twenty One Savage. Like you said, yeah, maybe, um, maybe Offset. He is me. Listen, listen, listen. I'm trying to. What I'm going is I'm trying to go with the the least. The least favorable rappers, the, the some of the the bottom rappers, as far as skill, but listen, oh, listen. Oh, 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 oh. What? Why are you going with bottom rappers as far as skill? Because Smith and Wesson wasn't considered rappers. No, 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 no. Back but, in the day, but what I'm saying with the with the with the with the the the, 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 the rap air, the rap that's going on right now. That's why I said take out Kendrick Lamar. Well, Jay you Cole. gotta. You got to go with rappers that got skill. Because you remember, like, two years ago, Craig Mack dropped the album. But listen to me, listen to me. Back in the back then, you had people like Wu-Tang, Boo Camp, Jay-Z, Nas, and all of them that was, was, was popping at the same time. It wasn't just one kind of rap popping. You know what I'm saying? As far as rap now... You got a bunch of bullshit that's like real heavy in rotation, and then you got people that like like J Cole and Kendrick that happen to that happen to get in there. You know what, what I'm saying? What are you saying, yo? Shut up! Listen to what I'm saying. You mean, what I'm saying is this: you see how you see how the um, Smith and Wesson, you see their evolution in in in, their, in, in what they go talk about in their rap, how they grow, how they grew as men. And they still got it. Who do you think now could do that? Other than J. Cole, Meek Mill, and Kendrick. I don't know. But, 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 but you you trying to go mainstream and Smith and Wesson wasn't They was mainstream back then. That was that was mainstream. Smith and Wesson? Yeah. They had one song. That was remixed and made it on the radio. Well, right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. No, but they would they would get played on the radio so, like on a Friday night when the radio would go in. They would have some Smith and Wesson. They might play some let some let's get it on on that bitch. They was not mainstream, yo. Yo, they was yo. They wasn't. They was not getting radio play, yo. Why? Did, yes, they was getting radio play. It was. They were getting radio play. All right. but it might, I guess it wouldn't be it wouldn't be in the weekly five songs they play in rotation every you know it'll be somewhere you know on a Friday night or the holiday when the holiday pop up. <laughs> yeah, you know how the radio do 
Fourth of July you weekend. Right? <laughs> yo, you know how they do, yo. Yo. So what I'm saying is, yeah, yo, I like how listen, they, listen, listen, listen. Smith and Wesson, they was dope MCs, right? Right. So dope MCs do what dope MCs do, and that's rap. And they never lost that. They've been rapping, they've been putting out projects throughout these years. They never stopped putting out music. You get what I'm saying? So they've been rapping. So they can rap. They always could rap. They they still right. rap the same way they rapped in ninety five. They flow ain't changed. None of that shit. They just changed what they was talking about. That's I it. Think it's, I, think it's, I think it's more rapping from that from that era that could come and still do their thing. Then more than it would be from this era. Then in the future, we'll still be doing that thing. Cause you still got now Red he, Man, Method Man. Don't say you're gonna say L. Oh, this, anyway, what's this nigga gonna say? LL Cool J. What's this nigga gonna say? Yo, was you gonna say no, LL Cool J? I didn't say LL Cool J. I like said L Nelly. Nelly, oh, that's a fuck. Nelly, Nelly was garbage back then. <laughs> Nelly's garbage now. You can't put Nelly in that, yo. Yo, I don't know, yo. Like, uh, I don't know, cause I wouldn't have guessed that Lil Boosie would still be rapping when he was out. So, have you heard Lil Boosie lately? I mean, I, I, he popping. I, I heard him. I heard him featured on that song. I don't want to hear no boozy. That's I've heard on me, baby. I've heard, yeah, 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 yellow boozy shit. Huh? Nah, I don't want hear a little boozy. Anyway, yo, what you get at Smith and Washington, yo? We went so everywhere. This review is crazy long for no reason, yo. What you get at Smith and Wesson? I gave it a nine. Yo, I gave it a nine too, yo. I, and, and, and this one of the ones that it grew on me, yo. This grew on me. The more I listened to it, the more I like their production was dope. Their content was dope. They showed growth. They kept it they still kept it street though. They kept it real to who they are. And um they kept it, you know, they put it out there. They put out there, they, you know, they put out there, put out their, their, their feelings towards their families and all that kind of shit. It was a good listen. Something that I'm yeah. probably, I'm definitely going to listen to again, without a doubt. I, I'm going to, I always got Smith & Wesson in rotation. That's a fact. Always got Smith & Wesson in rotation. So, that's what it is, yo. Smith & Wesson to all, man. I give it a nine. Tim, give it a nine. Look, seven, eight, nine. Yo, what we got next? Is it going to be a ten? Not for me. I'm telling you that yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, I, anyway, y'all, good boy DJ Big Diesel. Man. I'm just telling you. One of the last of a dime three. You know where hip hop live without the city jeans. That's why I walk with a different walk, fought with a different heart, talk with a different walk.